Well, good morning once again. If you want to be turning in your Bibles to the book of Galatians chapter 6, Galatians chapter 6, we'll be there in just a little bit. And I found it interesting this week, listening to the scanner, I heard a vehicle run that belonged to some of my church people in uh, Lowe's parking lot in Conway trying to abduct a uh, van load of uh, strangers. And when I found out it was the Stanix, I was like, hmm, Diane's not looking at me, so <laughs> if y'all hear any tales, I think they tried to uh, abduct a van load of uh, Hispanic men at Lowe's. Now she remembers. Of course, Diane's claiming they just got the wrong van, but I, I'm not too sure it wasn't an abduction attempt, but <laughs> it, it happens. <laughs> Uh, but as I began to seek God this week for the message that he had, I just asked him to show me things in this world that we need to see what's going on. Do you believe we as Christians need to know what's going on? For one reason, and that's because one day, Jesus Christ will split, split that eastern sky and come and take his church home. If that, if that tarries and we live our lives out, one day we will all stop breathing and we will pass from this life and then we will meet Jesus Christ. And at that time, if he is your savior, then you go to heaven. If he is not your savior, then you go to hell. Folks, there is no option C. There is no other way. There's two places. And there's only one way, and that's through the blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. So I began to listen to what the world had to say this week. And the first thing I found was an article about a transgender woman participating in the women's swim team at the University of Pennsylvania, absolutely dominating them. And some parents of some girls there were complaining and and the college come back and, and ruled in favor of the transgender woman. Then I began to hear them define transgender. Don't listen to what the world's definition is. I can tell you what a transgender woman is. It's a man. That's what it is, period. Uh, then I heard some talk about abortion this week and how, you know, oh, it's, it's the choice of the woman... Well, we all have a choice to sin, but what you must know is abortion is murder, period. There's no way around it. If you support it, you support murder. That's just plain and simple. That's the word of God. That's not my opinion. But they're trying to twist it around, and they're trying to do all these things. And, folks, I, then I heard, and if you watch TV of any kind, you understand how they define relations between a man and a woman that you can uh, just... Move in, try it, uh, you know, it's just everything is thrown at us from every kind of thing you can imagine. They throw it at us. Well, here's the, here is God's word. Sexual relations outside of wedlock is a sin, period. However you want to define it, it's a sin outside of wedlock. So I got to thinking and listening to all this, and then I, then I turned on AFR, and that's about the only place I'll get my news today. But I heard him talking to a scientist at Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT, which is one of the top ac academic institutions in the world. And I knew this was coming. I just didn't know when. And she come out, and this is, was her plea to the parents in America. She said, please do not vaccinate your children. She said, it will increase their chances for ALS, Alzheimer's, and many other diseases in their lifetime. And this is one of the top institutions in the world. And she, now, would there be people that argue with her? Sure. But my question to you is right now, how does anybody know? They don't. So here, that was her recommendation. And, and then she went on to say, and this one she even quoted the CDC, and you know how much power we have handed the CDC. She says you can no longer 
She said, it should not be what they are giving us now. She said, it cannot be called a vaccine for two scientific reasons. She said, number one, the vaccine does not prevent you from contracting the, or spreading COVID. And it does not, the, and the CDC acknowledges that, that it does not prevent you from getting it or spreading it. So she said, therefore, by the definitions of science, you cannot call it a vaccine. So whatever people are getting, it's not a vaccine. But I, then I wanted to define a word for you before we get it. Lie is to make an untrue statement with intent to deceive. Anybody know people? It's an old saying, but they'd rather climb a tree and tell you a lie when they could stand on the ground and tell you the truth. Now, don't amen, but I guarantee you we all know some. You can nod if you want to. That's fine. But it makes you feel better. But we do. And I want to tell you a story, and I changed the name a little bit, but I bet you some of you old-timers will recognize where this story come from. But there was a church one time, and they, and they had a, a man in the church, and he, he was one of those. He'd rather climb the tree, tell the lies. He would stand on the ground and tell the truth. He just always lying. And some of the deacons come to the pastor, and they said, you know, we got a problem over here with old new Gene. He's, he's just telling lies. Does anybody have a clue where I got this when I say new Gene? I hope I got some Jerry Clower fans out there. Yeah. Because that's where I got it. So New Gene, he, he just lying all the time. They said he's a really good guy. Give you the shirt off his back. He's just, he's just helpful. But they said he just lies about everything. He lies and lies. Said we're going to have to do something. So the preacher said, all right, let's get together and let's, let's form a plan. So preacher and the deacons decide they're going to go over there to New Gene's house and have an intervention. And the preacher said, here's what we're going to do. We're going to tell him a, a lie so unbelievable that he'll see just how silly it is to lie, and maybe he'll quit lying. And the deacon said, okay, who's going to be the spokesman? And the preacher said, I'll do it. So they go over to New Gene's house, and they go in, and New Gene says, oh, yeah, come on in, sit down. And the pastor said, New Gene, I want to tell you what happened at the church last Lord's Day. He said, I was reading the scripture, and he said, through that back door, he said, come a biggest old mean brown grizzly bear. He said, just busted through the doors and come running up into the church and just sat right in the middle of the, of the aisle. And he said, right behind that bear, he said, was about 11-pound feist dog, black and white. He said, chasing that bear. And he said, he come in, and he said, they got to fighting up there. And he said, oh, he's an awful commotion, knocked two or three pews over. And he said, that dog, he said, finally whooped that bear. And he said, then that dog ate that bear right there in front of the church. And he said, can you believe that new gene? And new gene said, well, yeah, pastor, I can. That's my dog. <laughs> so some people just going to lie, aren't they? Do you believe we're being lied to by our government? Do you believe we're being lied to by the media? Amen. Well, if we continue... Any of you ever lied to yourself besides me? If we continue to lie and deceive ourselves, folks, destruction is coming, and we'll have to admit we brought it on ourselves. So if you would, stand with me today in Galatians. If you find Galatians chapter 6, I want to read one short scripture here, and then we'll get deeper into the Word and show you what God is telling us about lying and what's going to happen Galatians chapter 6, I'm going to read you verse 7. It says, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you, Lord, for the wonderful Sunday school lesson, the beautiful songs that have been sung. Lord, we thank you for these children standing and doing work in your house. God, now it comes the preaching of your word. And Lord, I just pray that you forgive me of my sins, Lord, and cleanse this vessel and prepare me, Lord, to speak your holy word. And God, I just pray you forgive us all, Lord, of our sins and wash them away with your blood, Lord, and prepare our vessels to receive your holy word so that we can be what you've called us to be. And in Jesus' precious holy name, as children all prayed. Amen. What you want to tell the world today, what you just want to, uh, as the old folks would say, grab them and shake them and make them listen, 
You cannot sow lies and reap the truth. There's just no way you can do it. People are saying, oh, it's how you feel today. And I, we watched a show the other day where a guy, he had long black hair, and he was dressed and acting like a woman, but he had a beard like mine. I, I don't know how you get around that. I don't know how... And, he, and they were saying, it's how I feel today. I woke up and felt like a woman. So today, I'm a woman. I tried it. It didn't work. I woke up and said, I feel rich today, so I'm rich. It didn't work. We laugh, and it's silly, but I'm going to take you into Scripture and show you what Satan is trying to do to us by distorting, you know, I've been told I'm old-fashioned. Okay, I'll take that because I'm old and I may be fashioned. I'm not sure. But, you know, manners, can you remember a time when men would open the doors for ladies and, and they'd have manners and there was yes, sir, and, and yes, ma'am, and all these things? You know, people call that old-fashioned. Fine, I can live with that. If you want to call that old-fashioned and you see us drifting away from it, but let me tell you what they're trying to do. They're trying to make the truth old-fashioned. Who is the truth? Jesus. He very clearly says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So if they can attack truth, if they can attack the very, very thing, if they can attack male and female and say it's what you feel today. Well, guess what else they're saying? What's right and wrong? There is no right and wrong. It's whatever I feel today. You know, I heard this week, and folks, this is spreading so fast. A man went into a, like a 7-Eleven. I think it was, I don't even know what state it was in. But he was robbing the store, holding somebody at gunpoint, and a good Samaritan was in the store with a gun and shot and killed the robber. Do you know what the robber's mama come on the news and said? She wants to sue the person that shot her son, said he should have just left the store and let her son do what he wanted to do. There is no right and wrong in their eyes. You remember what we studied last week in the scripture? Why did men not go to the light? Because they love the darkness. Because why? Because their deeds were evil. <laughs> folks, you see evil rising up. And, they're, and folks, I'm going to tell you something. They, we are setting by and we are letting them infiltrate our schools, our churches, our government, and try to change everything that is true that's in the Word of God. You know, they are, I, I have been begging people because my term on school board is about over. And we're trying to find people who will stand for God's word to run because they are attacking our schools. They want our schools to ask our children if you want to be called he or her or them. Mm. I say any, any teacher, it, it, my time's short, but any teacher I find out about up there that's doing that, my vote is fire them and get them gone. And they say, oh, they'll sue you. And they'll call Bender, Bender, and Bender. And I say, and we'll be represented by Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Bring it on. I'm here to tell you, folks, we can either lay down and take it, and our generations, our children and our grandchildren will be living in a hell on earth, or we can make a stand and, st and teach them, hey, the Word of God is the only thing in this world that is true, and if you will stand on it, you will be delivered. My God is bigger than anything they are throwing at us. And, folks, I'm here to tell you this morning, they're trying to twist the word, and folks, it's getting into the church, and I'm fixing to show you an example. But anything anybody tells you that does not line up with this word is a lie. And who is the father of all lies? Satan. And who wants to tear up the church? Satan. And if you go to a church that Satan don't want to tear up, friend, you better leave. If he ain't worried about your church, he's already got it. But you see, we cannot sow lies and reap the truth. Would you agree as a nation we're sowing lies? 
We're passing laws that says, oh, it's legal to kill babies. We're passing laws that says it's, it's okay for he to marry he and she to marry she. No, it ain't. It is defined in this word. I don't care how many of the senators pass a law. If it's against God's law, it's wrong. I think I've told you this before, but I love, oh, brother, where art thou? And when Delmar gets saved and, and then he, he gets baptized, remember he gets in the car with old George Clooney and he said, I've been washed of all my sins. And George says, well, the state of Mississippi don't think so. Well, <laughs> here, here's the thing. Man's law, we have to obey it until it conflicts with God's law. Then we'll all eat the jello and read the magazines together, if that's all right with y'all. Because we need to stand for, we have to stand for God. But you see, there's a movement, and it's going through, it's all about us. What about Jesus was all about him, himself? Everything he did was for others, was for us. He sacrificed. He left us the most perfect example. But you know, if you love Jesus, this is the part they don't want to hear. And this is the part will make your church dwindle. It won't bring folks in. If you love Jesus, you'll live by his rules. I heard this morning a very wonderful Sunday school lesson out of the book of Deuteronomy. Folks, there are people who try to separate the New Testament and the Old Testament like it's two totally separate things. My Bible, between two covers, is the Old and the New Testament. Folks, do you think the Ten Commandments still apply today? People confuse grace and mercy with, with the rules, and they've twisted it so. And I'm going to show you a perfect example. I was talking with a gentleman, and we got on the subject of tithing. If you want to run folks off, talk about tithing. You start talking about the pocketbook and people disappear. But he began to tell me how nowhere in the New Testament does it say to tithe. And I'm just waiting for my I'm waiting for him to quit talking because I'm I'm fine fixing to fire back. And he says, nowhere in the he said, that's under the law. So he quit. And I said, Luke 1142. Very clearly, Jesus tells him. He's talking to the Pharisees. You tithe, you know, your herbs and your stuff like that, but you skip love and mercy. He said, you do well to do the one, but you need to do both. I said, how can you not see Jesus is saying to do both? You, you done right tithing, but you've also got to love. And his response, I know it was for me because it, was, it, it, it just lit this sermon up that he'd give me. His response was, well, when did Jesus live? He said he lived under the law. Y yeah. So do we. Where does it say we can go around and break the law? Through Jesus. See, Moses brought the law and Jesus brought grace. They want there is churches out there wanting us to believe there is no rules. Because of God's grace, you can live however you want to, and you're okay. Folks, that is a lie from the father of all lies. It's because of the grace of God that we can be forgiven of our sins. Guess what? We still sin, people. I hate to break it to you, but if you're under the sound of my voice this morning, you're a sinner. Now, there's one of two things. You've either given those sins to Jesus and asked him to forgive them, and here's the part they want to leave out. Here's the part they want to apply grace to that it does not apply to. you got to repent. You have to turn. And through that, God's grace is given to you. Now, let me tell you something. We couldn't make it without God's grace. But they take, they twist it so that it sounds like you don't have to worry about how you live. Folks, I'm going to tell you something. If you leave here on Sundays 
and you don't think about God anymore, and you go out and you sin and it doesn't convict you and you just live your life like a living hell and then you roll back in here on next Sunday and you sing the songs and you praise God, listen to me, you're lost. You have never met Jesus Christ. Now, they would tell me, if they heard me preaching this morning, they say, you're not giving God's grace to do. Oh, yes, I am. God's grace is the only thing, the reason I'm saved. Because I was a sinner, and I committed horrible sins, and that day I confessed them to Jesus Christ. The only reason he forgave me is because his grace on me and his mercy, and I'm thankful for that. But, folks, here it is at the bottom. At the end of the day, this is what nobody can argue. That whole argument back for it, and, and they call it works. It's not works. Your works can't get you to heaven. I don't care how good you think you are. You're not good enough. But by God's grace and God's blood, we can. He, he overlooks. He washes us with his blood. You know what I want him to see from you when you die and stand in front of him? I want him to see his son's blood applied to your life. If that is the case, then that is the ticket to heaven. We can't work our way in. But, but see, if they heard this preaching this morning, they'd say, oh, he's a works preacher. No, I'm not. What I'm saying is, if you know Jesus Christ and he has forgiven you of your sins and you're so grateful to him, then your works change. You're a different person. You're a new creation. You can't live in sin and enjoy the benefits of God. You got, and where does it all come down to? You say, well, preacher, here's the deal. I still sin some. Okay? My first question would be, do you sin as much as you used to? If you do, I'm going to invite you to go to the altar again. I don't think you got it right. But, but here's the thing. Even Paul, will. T if you read Paul carefully and study him, the older he got, huh, the more weaker he realized he was and how he described himself. When he started off, you know, he was the chiefest of apostles. But his last letter, he said, I'm the chiefest of sinners. Paul realized he needed God, and so do we. But here's... here's I want to close that part of this with this. If you have any doubt about the law and, and grace, here's the one thing, and only God can see this, God in you, and that's your heart. What is your intention? I'm telling you this morning, examine yourself. If you leave here, and as soon as you walk out the door, God's behind you. And folks, the reason I say that, I lived my life like that for a long time. I would go to church every Sunday. We sat in the same pew. I would listen to the Sunday school lesson. I would listen to the preaching. And I've told you this before. And it'd get about this time, and I'd be looking up there thinking, I hope he's about done because the Cowboys kick off at noon. And when I walked out that door, folks, that's the last thing. I gave to God. I was lost. No other way to put it, folks. But the day I truly met him, the day I broke down and gave him everything, he changed me. Do I still sin? Of course I do, and my wife can amen me if she wants to. But when I do now, guess what? That Holy Spirit is convicting me, and I told her, this week, I said, I felt God working me this week because I was in a situation where I could have easily talked about somebody, and I have many times. And I said, before I did, God convicted me and said, remember who you are. You're my child, and my children don't talk like that. And I stopped. And I thanked him for grabbing a hold of me. He ever stopped you from doing something you shouldn't do? Amen. And if you're like me, sometimes you ignore him, and you went ahead and did it anyway. Yeah. Well... Folks, it is all about love. If you love God, you will not break those Ten Commandments. That's very clear. But we still sin. But see, they want to say there's no rules. How would you like to live in a land where there's no rules? You know, they're wanting to real bad right now. They're saying if somebody breaks into your house and steals something, there's people saying you have no right to protect yourself, that you should just let them have your stuff because they, they must need it. If they need it, they can get a job. That's my view. Or they can knock on my door and ask me for it, and I'll give it to them. 
but don't kick in my door and try to take it because I will protect my family. But you see what they're trying to do little by little. And like I told you, folks, there are sermons being preached this morning that says there's no rules. And I've just got one verse for them. It's in the book of John. Jesus says, if you love me, obey my commands. How do you obey something if there's nothing to obey? You think Jesus wants us going down robbing the 7-Eleven? You think Jesus wants us carjacking people? You think Jesus wants us gossiping in church? You think Jesus wants us to uh, forgive people? Do you think Jesus wants us to love people? Do you think Jesus wants us to look down on anybody? Do you think Jesus wants us to, what do you think Jesus wants us to be? Like him. And if you don't know what that is, I encourage you to get in this word because from the very beginning to the very end, this is a love story. And when we get to heaven, church, when we see heaven, we will realize far more than we do now how much God loves us because Jesus left heaven to come down here to be abused by us so that we could go back with him but you see I've heard people say in this week some say that the vaccine's a test run for the mark of the beast I don't totally agree or disagree with that but I will say this, the mark of the beast will be a conscious decision. And I pray that none of you face that. I don't want you to be here in a tribulation. Uh, but I'm going to read you a scripture as we get ready to close up. And I want to show you what the deception is and, and why the deception is, why it is so important that we learn now that the deception is going on. But they, these people during this time, during the time of the tribulation, they will not be able to discern the truth. Do you think we have trouble discerning the truth today? We, I heard Sister Frankie teaching about honest judges. How many judges are totally honest? Do you know, let's just be honest. Would you agree with me the Supreme Court swings back and forth between liberal and conservative? Why is that? Because when a party takes over the White House and there's a judge open, are they going to nominate somebody that agrees with them? or somebody? So we have two very different sides, right? How about honesty? How about we put a judge in there that believes this Bible, then that believes God is the God maker of all, and that this, you do realize, this was the very first... Uh, school book in America. If it's good enough for that, folks, our country was founded on this word. Our country was founded on God. That's why we enjoy so many of the blessings we do today. But folks, just like the chosen ones that Moses led, we have been circling the wilderness. Why? Because we've got away from God's word. Second Thessalonians. I want to set the stage for you here. Chapter 2, I'm going to read you verses 9 through 12. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 9 through 12. This is talking about the Antichrist coming during and during the time of tri tribulation. It says, Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power, and listen to this, and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness and unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the, the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Folks, I hear preachers preaching that anybody that dies goes to heaven. I wish I could preach that to you. I wish I could tell you that. It's not true. You're either saved or you're lost. You're in or you're out. 
And just like I tell you all the time, just because the courier Democrat said you went to be home with your Heavenly Father does not mean you went to be home with your Heavenly Father. If your name was written in the Lamb's Book of Life, then you get to go home to be your, with your Father. And there is only one way to get your name in that book, and that is to confess your sins to Jesus Christ, ask Him to forgive you, ask Him into your heart, and turn from your sins and seek Him. That last part, they want to leave off. But yes, it does require something of you, and that is to seek God, believe God, and live for God. So what do we do? All this lying going on, what do we do? We get ready to tell and to live the truth. I want to close with a scripture in 2 Timothy. The apostle Paul was getting ready to die and he's passing on to young Timothy some words of wisdom. And he charged Timothy with what to do. I believe with everything in my heart that God is charging us today to do the exact same thing that Paul charged Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 4, I'm going to read you verses 1 through 5. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and they shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. You may say, well, pastor, God hadn't called me to be an evangelist or a preacher. I, I get that. But he has called you to let your life preach a sermon. I tell you, I've told you many times, it is far easier for me to stand up here and preach a sermon to you than it is for me to live a sermon. It's easier to say something than to do it. He's calling us to live in a way that others see something in us that's not the same as this world. You know, both my daughters are in college now, and to hear some of the things they hear and to hear some of the things they're being taught, you're just like, and not only that, we're, people are paying a whole lot of money to be taught lies of the world. Well, we live here. We have no choice about that. But we do not live like it. We cannot. We have to be separate. Uh, and, and Peter tells us we're a royal priesthood. We're to be different. Uh, they can talk about us, and they will. They can criticize us, and they will. But we must love them, and we must pray for them, and we must walk the line. We must obey God. And what's his number one commandment? Love thy Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love thy neighbor as thyself. If we will do those two things, then you're right. The rules really don't matter. But you cannot break the rules. You've got to live for God.